Hello everyone, it's Daryl. We're here in the basement today because we have no heat. One of the coldest days of the year and the furnace has failed. So, what we're going to do is we're going to do a little diagnostic work to show you how to fix your own furnace and save a ton of money. Because furnace repairs can be really expensive, but most of the time they're pretty easy to fix. So, first step, turn the power switch off. Here on this one is just a little switch here, turn to the off position. Next step, remove the cover plate on the furnace with a little thumb screw here. And take this out, and then the whole thing should tip backwards and pull off. And we'll set that aside, just don't need that again. All right, now we'll go through some parts here on the furnace. Just so you know, when you first turn your furnace on and the thermostat is calling for heat, the one, the very first thing you hear, you'll hear the main blower fan come on. But you also, if you had the cover plate off, you would see this little thing here called the inducer fan. That would come on and start spinning like so. This one's getting a little noisy, but I, now that does still work. I've already tested that. But anyway, that's the inducer fan. Once the inducer fan kicks on, it creates a vacuum inside the firebox to make sure the gas and the combustion exhaust is flowing in the right direction. And the carbon monoxide actually goes up the chimney. So, next secondary step is the vacuum valve. These fail sometimes. What happens is when it senses the vacuum coming through this tube, these two wires connect inside and make contact. So what you want to do to check that is you put your ohm meter across both those terminals. It should not have continuity until you pull this rubber hose here off. Suck a little bit of air through it. And then you, while you're getting a little bit of suction of that, you'll have continuity through that switch, if that vacuum switch is good. And I've already checked that, and that vacuum switch tests good. It had full continuity through it when I applied suction to it. Let's cut. All right, and we have the voltmeter here. We set it to the ohm scale over here on this side. Ohms is this little omega symbol here. And then we take the two test leads, and you should have... If you have good continuity through something, it should show up as infinity or all zeros when you touch the two sides of it. And you just take your probes, and you touch one to each side, and look at the reading on your meter. This is, these do go bad quite often. It's real easy to change. There's one screw right here that holds it to the furnace. There's one screw right here that holds this whole safety switch assembly to the furnace. And that's really easy to change. The induction motor, if it should fail, is also very easy to change. There's three, I think they're quarter inch drive nuts here, one, two, three, that hold this whole motor assembly in place. And one pair of wires here on the bottom that you take off and the whole thing just slides straight out. That's also very, everything out here is pretty easy to change. There's really not much on here that you need to be afraid of. As long as you've got the power turned off and you don't mess with the gas valve. All right, next thing we checked are the high limit switches. There's three limit switches on here to make sure the furnace comes on and shuts off safely at the right temperatures. Again, we're going to use the ohm scale on here. There's always one limit switch on the vent stack. Here's a limit switch on the vent stack. And again, you just touch this one side here and one side here and make sure your gauge goes to all zeros. Which, there you can see, you don't really need to show it to them. I think they understand how the ohm thing works. But if not, you can say you can see how it works. So there's another one for the firebox. Same thing. We're not going to put the test meter in there so you can actually see it better. But right down here, there's one on the firebox. And then there's a third one on the side of the gas... I guess we call it the gas box. And that's over here on this side. And that one actually has a little pop-up reset button in the center. So if you don't have continuity through this one, you can push on that little reset button and see if that resets it. So... Those are the main safety functions. The other thing you'll want to check is your transformer. The gas valve and some of the other components run on 24 volts instead of 120, and there's a little transformer in here that steps the voltage down from household current to 24 to 27 volts. And the transformer is usually mounted somewhere, you never know, it's, it can be mounted up underneath here, it can be mounted up underneath here, and on this one, it's mounted, where was that one at? I followed the wires to it. It's mounted. I can't remember where it's mounted at, but I did check it and it's putting out 27 volts. And that would be a little different. What you do on that one is you set your meter to 
volts AC to the lower number, like on 200 volts. And then you just, for that test, you have to actually turn the power back on. So you'll turn the, you'd turn the power back on and then touch your leads to the two leads coming out of the transformer. And it would show you between 24 and 28 volts. And that would show you that the transformer is good. All right, we've done all these tests already. And we found that the... Still not, furnace is still not coming on. Uh, like I said, this isn't coming on. The induction motor is not coming on. The, um, nothing else is working like it's supposed to. So, what we did is we pulled the cover off the burner box. Now we're going a little bit deeper into the furnace. Two screws hold the burner box cover on, or I should say the control box cover. So we're going to take these two screws here out. One more thing I forgot to mention earlier was that igniter coil. If you follow these two wires here up underneath, you'll see it has a flat hot surface igniter coil and those fail quite frequently. Those are easy to change too. You can see there's like one or two screws on there, hold it on and that's super easy to test with your ohm meter. You set it on the ohm scale, pull this apart here, put your ohm meter across these two terminals and it should be, I believe, I don't know, there's a number for it. I don't remember what the ohm rating is, but I had to look it up. And you have to check and make sure it's within the proper spec. I believe it's 40 to 90 ohms or something like that. And those are real easy to change. They're not too expensive to buy it yourself. It's like $16, $17. Uh, get it at your local store, it's probably 30 or 40 But, you know, anytime you come out and have a furnace guy to your house, it's like $80 service call plus hours on the job and double or triple the price on the parts. So even if you had to go and pay 40 bucks for the igniter, you know, you're still saving yourself close to $100 by doing it yourself. But we've checked the igniter. The igniter is not even getting juice to it. So the igniter is good, but there's no juice coming to it. Same thing with the induction fan. The induction fan actually worked at one point. I can see it working, but there's not juice coming to it during the startup cycle. So since there's no juice going to any of this stuff during the startup cycle, then our next assumption has to be the bad circuit board. When I say up above the circuit board is the transformer, which we've already checked. The only other thing would be the thermostat, which we've already bypassed and checked. So that leaves us with the most common repair on these, and that's the circuit board. And a new circuit board from a shop is about $300, plus another 150 or so to come out and put it on. So you're looking at four to $500 to have someone come out and put a circuit board on. I got mine used off eBay for $35. And I'm going to put it on myself, and it looks intimidating because it's got all those wires on it. But... It's really not that hard. You just have two screws that hold the circuit board on. And then once it's off, you can take it wire by wire and just tr transfer each wire back onto the board where it belongs. It's really not that hard at all. And we're going to show you how to do that and really save yourself Something some money. Something's at the cat door trying to sneak in. Oh, it's the cat. Hello, kitty. Tinsel the Christmas cat comes and goes as he pleases. And you're just working here busily trying to transfer all these wires from one to another without making any mistakes. It's not too hard. The hardest part is just each one of these little screws here. we got to loosen those up and put the 24 volt section of it, which is like your thermostat line and your other things, up to those junction block screws there. Then you just do one at a time. Loosen one, install one. Loosen one, install one. It's really not difficult. It's just time consuming. All right, we have successfully reinstalled the circuit board. Everything looks like it's on there nice and tight. All the wires line up where they used to. I believe I've gotten everything correctly in place. It was now, if I took some pictures, everything looks right. I, I think we're good. So what we're gonna do is we're not gonna put all this together quite yet. We're gonna hold the safety button in by hand or you can put a piece of tape over it. And then we're gonna turn the furnace on and see if it comes on. The first thing that should happen is this Little motor here should start spinning. So here we go. Alright, you can see there is fire in the firebox. The burner has ignited. Okay, so see the glow plugs turning on? It's going to start the flame here pretty soon. The inducer is spinning. We have flames. 
Alright, so Daryl changed out the whole circuit board. We ran into an issue. Our thermostat wasn't high enough temperature to make it turn on, so that was the problem. We It wasn't turning on at first, but now it's turned on and back to normal. You can do it yourself, save a lot of money. Make sure you check all the little things before with your voltmeter and such. You can do it, save a lot of money. Thank you for watching. Have a great day. Bye for now. Thank you.